Hello and welcome to Live Dreams. I am here once again with General Neil Tully. John, how you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. It's hot and sunny down here in Florida. It's hot. Thank God I'm in the air conditioning. Yes. They say Texas is still preheating, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Florida's there. I think Florida's there. I think what's I think we're at ninety right now. Ninety. Uh, it's been ninety here today, but uh, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Not too bad. Um, how is how was your Memorial Day? Memorial Day was solemn. You know, this is a weekend that we celebrate and honor those who have fallen in defense of this nation. And um, you know, it's a solemn occasion. It's not a time for celebration, really. It's we celebrate them, but in a very solemn way. Yeah. Um, I spent the weekend pretty much the same way, in a very solemn kind of state. Just yeah. remembering friends that have gone on before me, knowing one day I'll meet them again face to face, which will be an honor. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I. I, uh, I almost. Uh, I always debate whether or not to like write a Facebook post or to post my thoughts or not, and uh, and I was going to, but I decided not to because I was in the mode of. You know, it's all fun and games when you want to honor somebody. But in the event that our country is <clears throat> sold out or taken over, who, which of you are willing to grab a gun? And if you're not, then you don't honor anybody from the past at all, actually. You know, but I thought, well, you know, let, uh, let the families enjoy their barbecue. <laughs> <You know? laughs> not everybody yeah. needs my thoughts all the time. But, uh, <clears throat> I'm just... I think those of us that have been in the military and especially as long as you have and have commanded men and special forces, um, which I have not, but I have lost people in war and terrorist activities and things like that. It's just, a, yeah. it's, it's a different day, you know? But, yeah, it is. It's, it's really not like any other holiday that we have in the country. It's, it's very unique. I mean, it's, it's the one that we celebrate heroes. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Well, <clears throat> let's open up. Thank you, by the way, for your service. Your Thank you for your service, service for this nation. Um, but yeah, and all those that are listening that have served or were service wives or family members or concerned moms that stayed home and prayed. Uh, I know my mom prayed for me all 11 years that I was in and still continues to on a daily basis, as does my dad. But uh, it's kind of a family affair when you're in the military. Um, <clears throat> but let's uh, let's open up with a word of prayer and then we'll get started. Okay. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for um, God. We thank you for those that serve this amazing country, those that gave the ultimate sacrifice, those that have sacrificed pieces of themselves, those that have come back wounded or shocked or traumatized or. And those that made it through unscathed, God, we thank you for the service that they have to this nation, this nation that was built um, <clears throat> with your hand and chose you as our God from the beginning. And so we thank you, Father, and we ask that you would continue to be with this nation and with our military and with our veterans and with our leaders, Lord God, that you would bring righteous leaders into this land, that you would remove the corrupt, Lord God. And uh, <clears throat> those that have been compromised and those that are acting against the goodness of this nation and her people, Lord God, that they would be cut out um, quickly and removed. And God, that you would restore this nation to its values and to the value of seeking you and being a treasured place for people seeking freedom and liberty and freedom of speech and religious freedom and freedom of expression, God, that it would be that place again, the shining city on a hill, Lord God. God, we thank you that you still speak through dreams. We thank you, Lord God. We ask for more dreams, more visions, um, that you would give us words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and even be with us tonight, Lord God, as we interpret the dreams of our friends that come on here seeking to hear from you and to know what you would say to them and to their lives. Bless us and meet us in this place tonight. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. And Amen. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. Well, we have Alexis with us. 
Hi, Alexis. Hi. 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 Um, okay. Uh, what'd you say? I said, it's good to see you. Oh, thank you. It's good to be seen. I'm sure my mom's <laughs> looking the same at me. <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, I'm not used to being on YouTube at all. I very specifically don't go on here. This looks okay. Except for uh, us. Okay. Thank you <laughs> for showing up. You're welcome. I have a dream I want to share, and then there's like a snippet part, like a small part of a different one. I don't know if it's all right to share too, or does that make sense? Well, start out with the dream you want to share, and let's see where that takes us. Okay. Okay, so for the dream that I want to share, is it okay if I like flicker back and forth briefly? I don't know if y'all can still hear me. Yeah. Just to yeah, look can. at it. Okay. Yeah. And let me know, can you still hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. Wait, can you still see me? Um, no, we see a frozen okay, picture. We, we good, see your frozen picture. <laughs> okay. So apparently I was at this super big opulent hotel with my family, like all the members of my family, uh, except for my sister. My sister had, my sister actually is not, no longer living. So she wasn't there, but the rest of my family was there. And uh, my husband was there and it was really pretty. It looked like a super huge cruise ship. And when two of my sisters, so I was with, walking with my husband and two of my sisters, Adriana and Antonia, and we, they, the Antonia and Adriana ran off in a different direction to go change clothes. And so I like took off after them. And when I did that, like they changed clothes, but my clothes automatically changed into the kind of clothes they were, they were wearing. Um, so basically, You cut out. We can't hear you anymore. Can you hear us? <clears throat> Alexis, can you hear us? We'll have to come back to her. Looks like there were a little bit of technical difficulties. <clears throat> Let me try again real briefly here. Hey, there you are. I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, you cut out. Oh, no worries. I remember a good portion of what I said, kind of. Okay. okay. So Your clothes changed um, automatically. Yes, that's exactly where it was. So it was changing automatically, and I felt really pretty about it. I was I always wanted to wear like a Caribbean outfit, although I think it's really revealing. As you can see, I'm very clothed. Very clothed. Um, but it was very revealing, and I, I loved it. I felt really beautiful, and then it was, we were like, running down all these flights of stairs. It was like the Titanic, like as it was just so big and so opulent and so beautiful. And as we're running down all these stairs, and we're so excited for everyone to see us and everything else and in our finery, because except instead of the feathers though, um, it was more like a, it was more like a lingerie nightgown sort of thing. So like almost like a, a cape that you can put your arms through. Um, you know, like you see women they're wearing this like little boa around, they're like, Mm -hmm. It's like a jacket, except it has like feathers or a boa around like the wrist and around like the, this part. It's like, ooh, look at me. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. And if you need me to pause, just let me know. Um, okay. So, so I'm like literally just coming off of work very literally. So I was I'm just, um, so as we're running, as we're all running down the steps, we finally make it to, it's not the bottom because the, the, there's so many levels, but it's just like, it's like a landing place. And then I'm sitting, I, I get on, I get into the room with the rest of my sisters. And they're all like milling about excited. Everyone who's around us is excited to see us. My dad, he's looking like away from me. And I'm like, daddy, it's me. And he's like, oh, it's you, my daughter. Okay, cool. I thought you were a woman. I'm like, thanks, daddy. No, you can look at me. It's appropriate. You can't think ill thoughts about me, I don't think. Whatever. Yeah, and so <laughs> that happened, and but he was very happy once he realized his daughter. He's like, because he didn't have daughter's eyes or something. And then I was sitting next to my husband. I was super excited. And I was like, oh, and he was like playing on his phone, like some kind of game or something. And a nice white lady came up to me, who was blonde, and she was like, hey, you look awesome. I'm like, thank you, random white lady. I'm not okay. And I was like, well, thank you. And then <laughs> she was like, you're welcome. Like you can kind of creep me out because you're still like right here next to my face. But she she eventually went away. But like just different people kept coming up to me and telling me how beautiful I was. And I was like, thank you, random people. 
And then I was like looking at my husband and he was like, oh, you look so pretty. I'm like, thanks. And then he stopped and continued playing the game. And then I waited and I waited and I waited some more. And then I was just, I jumped up and I said, that's it. I've had it. I, I was like, I, I look gorgeous. All these people are telling me this. And then he jumped up and he said that he had it. And I'm like, and I was, it's his, his jump up startled me. Like, like there were, it meant business or something, even though I had jumped up first. Mm. And then he marched off like really fast. And then I was trying to catch him. So I was like holding the trains of my, my kind of lingerie half carnival outfit. And so I was, instead of going directly after him, I was going up all these different levels, just up and up and up trying to catch up to him. And I was trying to beat him to the, to the, uh, the hotel suite room. And for some reason there was like a hallway and a nice white lady came, white lady came out of it. I was like, Oh, nice white lady. And I hope this isn't rude to anyone. <laughs> so, um, and then I went in cause she had opened the door and it was like a bathroom for like one person. And I went in and I looked at myself and I was like, I was like, aren't I beautiful? And when I looked at myself though, I was like completely flat chested and my belly button was a lot bigger than like, it was very pronounced inner belly button. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> this is fun for me. Um, and I was just, I, I remember just looking at my body saying, this body doesn't even look like mine, like at all. It looks more flat chested and athletic. And that's not how my body looks. And I remember coming out of the bathroom and she came in. I was like, I'm sorry. I took over your bathroom moment. And then <laughs> I remember trying to go after my husband. I didn't, I didn't know where he was at that point. And I was walking down one of the opulent hallways. And I think I was trying to figure out whether or not to change out of the clothes I was wearing. Cause I was like, I don't know if it matters anymore. And then my family was like, like, it's almost like a moving, like the, the hotel was so huge. It was like a moving <clears throat> ship that they could sit on. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> So like, as I'm walking, they're like right beside me, like my hand is right here. Um, they're all in that like basket or whatever. And they're like, come join us, Alexis. And I'm like, I don't know whether I'm supposed to join you or not. I'm so trying to find my husband. And I just remember I just being upset. And that's it. Okay, cool. So the idea of being in a hotel with family is like a place of transition, right? It's just people, normally people don't live in a hotel. They're there temporarily. So it's like mm -hmm. a temporary way station. Um, the idea of also being sort of like a hotel, but also like a ship is the idea of being in movement while you're in transition. Mm -hmm. Oh, that makes me terribly sad. <laughs> I don't even know why. <laughs> but I'm happy here. I'm listening. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, the other thing is that your family was all there together. So I feel like mm -hmm. this is talking about a family anointing or a family um, like mantle. And it was interesting because you said your sisters wanted to go, your sisters had to go and change, but you changed automatically, which is the idea of the idea of changing clothes. The idea of wearing a new mantle. You're literally putting something on that people identify you with or identify you by like a new gifting or a new level of, of uh, calling or something like that. And it's interesting. You mentioned it was like night clothes, which to me immediately thinks of, of course, dreaming. The idea that perhaps you carry a mantle that has to do with being a, a seer or a dreamer. And in particular, when you describe the outfit, how it was beautiful and it had like the boa and the cape and, you know, the different pieces that it had um, <clears throat> is the idea that it, it sounded very colorful. It sounded very beautiful. Multiple people, even in the dream, commented. It reminds me of Joseph and the coat of many colors. So a lot of times when we see something in a dream that looks aesthetically appealing or that's very colorful, it represents the idea of the seer gift or the figurative or visual language of God. And so yeah. I believe one of the things that it's saying is that your family uh, might have <clears throat> an anointing for this, but you in particular, you didn't have to go somewhere to change. It like just changed automatically. It changed automatically. And then you wanted to go show your family and say, hey, check out what I'm wearing. Hey, dad, you know, look, it's me. And hey, my sisters are here. And hey, it's me. And, and then your husband, you know, and then other random people were coming up and saying, <laughs> hey, you have, wow, you look really beautiful. And you were like, thank you. But then what's really interesting is when you started to look in the mirror in the bathroom, 
Now the bathroom represents like the secret place, a place of cleansing, a place of self-reflection, which is what you were doing because you were looking at her. And you're looking and you're like, well, this, this isn't my body. I'm not built like this. I'm built differently. <clears throat> and so some of the changes that you saw, I believe were representing something that has to do with like the future that you're moving into. Um, and they could represent, they can represent like the whole idea of a pronounced belly button. You know, I, I just hear Naval Observatory. You know, I'm a, I, was an, I was a Navy guy. So the mm -hmm. whole idea that, first of all, you're on something that's like a ship and <clears throat> you can see something that's <laughs> pronounced, you know, it's like a play on words, you know, it's a pronounced mm -hmm. naval, but a naval observatory would be something in particular that relates to um, ships and different things. Like I think the naval observatory is actually in Washington, D.C. And isn't that the quarters of the vice president, Neil? Mm, good that's question. I think it is. Houses. That sounds right. Yeah. So I think that's really, really interesting. <clears throat> the idea of being flat chested could just simply mean transitioning out of a place where you were nurturing and you were discipling people and you were, you know, mothering and feeding them into a place where you don't you're not doing that as much anymore. You're doing something that's a little bit. And, and, and again, the body, it's not like your body is going to change. It's just simply represents the function of what those parts would be. Again, the naval would be like the naval observatory. It's a play on words. And so I feel like what God is saying is that you're going to be a person that's going to travel and that you're going to go places, which represents the ship and also represents the idea of the naval observatory. But you're also a seer and a dreamer, somebody that God is going to use even more so in the gifting of the seer realm and the dreamer realm. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> Ow, my forehead. <laughs> Which I didn't see my eye, my forehead. Wait, what did my husband represent? I think your husband represents. Um, he could he could literally be your husband. <laughs> represents huh? a partner traveling with you, somebody that you're like, hey, how you doing? This is how I look, and then you want to go find him, and you know, just the idea of being with him together as you know, you're transitioning into this new mantle. What do you think? Do you got any thoughts? Yeah. A couple. Um, when you, when you get on the ship with all your family and you're just really excited, you know, it's, it's almost like a kind of a vision of heaven, but all these people are recognizing how beautiful you are and just how, and you feel beautiful too, just by the way you're dressed. And you said the, the lingerie gown that you're wearing was kind of transparent. Um, that kind of indicates that you're, you're you are transparent you're open it, it's not mean it doesn't mean that you walk around in this stuff it just means that you are <laughs> open and transparent with others and you're willing to let people in but i think all these people are recognizing you through the eyes of god what they're seeing is you through god's eyes and in god's eyes you are absolutely beautiful uh -huh. and some of the other the other people that you know are often closest to us are the last ones to recognize that and and I, your dad eventually does. He's like, oh, wait, that's not you. <laughs> you're not my daughter. You're not four years old still. Oh, you're a woman. Oh, well, okay. You've grown up and you look beautiful. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you're going down the stairs. You know, all of you are running down the stairs to get to, to get to the bottom of something. And something is, that's what you're getting to the bottom. When you finally find a landing place somewhere down the ship. It's not all the way in the hold. So you're not in steerage class. You're somewhere up above that. And you find your room and you're just happy to be with your family. But you sit down and your husband's like uh, ignoring you. And in a lot of cases, I don't know how you get along with your husband. I assume you get along fairly well. Um, but, um, you know, he doesn't recognize the calling that you have. Or, you know, at some point it gets a little you get a little frustrated with that. And so you both end up zinging off in different directions. He goes one way, you go up. You take different paths to get to the same place. But eventually, you're going to get to the same place. Um, and the, the family that's walking alongside with you, um, I think, is, is just they're supporting you. They're, they're there to support you. And your husband, you finally link up with them, but you end the dream, and you're still upset, right? Yes. That's real. <laughs> Sounded like a really nice car. 
Um, <laughs> well, I think I think if your husband represents your husband, as John said, that there's something you two need to discuss. I don't. I think maybe you know what it is, but if you don't pray about it, um, there might be something there. But he will eventually see you as through God's eyes and see how beautiful you really are. You said you were when you were looking in the mirror. You thought you had an athletic body, right? It, 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 the body looked athletic, but it, the flat chestedness threw me off. It, 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 my body's more of an hourglass. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't think, I think it, it represents more your calling, like John was saying. You know, I think you're about to take an, an athletic, uh, a calling that takes a lot of energy and it's going to take your strength to go through it. And as an athlete, that's what an athlete has a lot of strength, a lot of flexibility, a lot of, you know, power. And that's what you have. A season to run. run. Say again? A season to run. Yeah, it's a season for you to run. <laughs> People are saying, this girl is even beautiful when she's crying. <laughs> 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 Thank you. But, wow, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that story with us. Where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from Columbia, South Carolina. Currently, I actually live in the... DMV area. This is Naval Observatory. I've never heard of that before, so I was going to Google it afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Check it out. See if it speaks to you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing your dream with us, Alexis. Thanks, Alexis. <clears throat> My pleasure. Thank you for having me. All right. I do want to ask about that snippet part right quick. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. And one part, I was talking with a bunch of different kids, and they were super sweet, and I love them and everything. And I was trying to tell them how to do something. And this little boy looked at me and I was like, what's wrong? And then something drops off. And I guess it, I thought it was on my head or something. And when I look down to see what it is, it's like spiky and it's black, but then it has brown. And I realized it's like all of these, like in, oh, so disgusting. And so <laughs> it was all these, ugh, it was all these like, just bugs and just like centipedes or whatever, just crawling all, all over each other. And I was like, it fell off my head. And then on the top of my head, I was like, I, I felt and I looked, I don't know what I was looking at, but I could see myself and I could see that I had like almost like a volcano welt. Like, you know, if you have like a mosquito bite or something, it what like that opening, you can see the, op well, you can't usually see the opening with mosquito bites, whatever, but it's like almost like a volcano. And it was kind of like purplish, like it had been on my head. And like when it fell off, that it left the protrusion in the opening. But the opening looked like it was on the verge of closing. And I was just upset. I was like, it's okay. It's going to heal. It just really looks upset. And the child's like, it's okay. I'm like, why are you saying it's okay to me? I'm the adult. I'm like, thank you, though. I appreciate it. And, so, <laughs> and, I, and I woke up. I was just so disgusted. But yes, that was it. That's the snippet part. <laughs> That's really interesting. I think I think one of the things that God is dealing with you um, <clears throat> on is your self-image. Oh my! I almost threw this phone. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. There's a lot of things I'm going through, and y'all are talking to it, and I'm just trying to breathe through it. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, so the idea of being in the secret place and looking at your self-image uh -huh. and seeing, well, hey, I thought I was like this, but I'm like this. I'm being I'm being equipped differently in this new season. And then the whole idea of this insects and stuff falling out of your head is the idea of uh, sabotaging uh, thought or like a toxic mindset that you may have had uh, towards yourself. And it just literally uh, fell off you as you're uh -huh. serving others. Because when you're taking care of kids, it's about the kids and you're serving them. Hey, how are you doing? What's going on? And as you're serving others, this like tangled up mindset that is really, is, it's not you, it's the enemy trying to oppress you and trying to make you feel not very valuable or not very beautiful or whatever, while you're serving others and it's not focused on you at all. It literally just falls right off you. And you're like, ooh, that thing's ugly. That thing was on me. Yeah, it was part of the mindset. But now God's delivered you from it and it's gone. Yeah, I think the <clears throat> the bugs represent, also represents things that are bugging you. Things that are bothering you. Mm. And they're falling off. That, that volcano welt is something that's going to erupt, that's going to cure it all, and it's going to be okay. You know, out of the mouths of babes, the little, the little child said, it's okay. 
<laughs> and you know why he said that? It's because it's going to be okay. Yeah. Uh, it's God. God is speaking through children too, to you. You got you, Alexis. Uh, well, now I'm going to start following y'all more often. A lot more often. You may see me a lot more frequently or not. <laughs> All right. Well, I think you're going to be one of our favorite guests to have on. Thank you. And thank you for having me. And thank you for all those people who are coming after me, not ahead of Absolutely. me just now. I really need to say all this. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Wow. That was fun. That was pretty intense. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Hmm. Amazing. All right, Dwayne. All right. Hey, how's it going? God bless. Good. How are you doing, sir? Dwayne. Good, sir. Amen. Um, um, okay. Now, um, uh, the dream that I had, um, now my mom, my mom is, uh, deceased. My mom passed in 1987, uh, three weeks after I graduated out of high school in 87. So in the dream, um, I was laying on the bed and she was laying on the side of me and I end up, um, waking up and on top of my mom was this lady. And she was dressed in, um, um, you know, uh, with a whip, uh, with a chain. Uh, she had a hat on and she had that erotica kind of uh, uh, dress attire, uh, you know, that that looks like a uh, uh, something like a, you know, uh, like a mistress or something. And so I woke up, I looked to my right and I saw this lady on top of my mom, you know, and I said, I command you in the name of Jesus, get out of here, get out of here. And then she got up and then I said, you're a witch, you're a witch, get out of here, get out of here. And, um, and so she, and she, and so she, uh, she started to trot and then she looked back and when she looked back, something came out of her and whatever it was that came out of her, I fell into a sleep paralysis where I couldn't move and something was trying to put something inside of my body. Now, I had been having dreams like that of sleep paralysis where something, you know, holding me down and something, and, and I can tell they're trying to put something in my body, trying to put something, you know, inside of my body. And I can tell that something has changed um, in my body, but um, over a period of time, but I've been rebuking it. Uh, I've been fasting and praying and, um, I, I dream a lot. I, I have so many dreams, but a lot, I, 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 I don't understand them. So when I wake up, I just say, well, Lord, if, if this was not of you, I rebuke it and I cancel it. So I just want, uh, you know, kind of want some understanding, um, you know, what, you know, what could that mean? Hmm. That's a really interesting dream. The first thing that I heard was the spirit of Jezebel. <clears throat> Jezebel is a dominatrix. She's a seductress. She's all those things. And it sounds like an attack on your family because initially she tried to attack your mom and then you dealt with it and got her off your mom. But then she came after you or was it was really the spirit that was behind it, the spirit in inside of her and wanting to put something literally inside of you, which is just the idea of a demonic oppression. <clears throat> it's something that wants to rule from the inside. You know, I, I used to hear the difference between like oppression and possession is you can't stop a bird from pooping on your head, but if it lands there and makes a nest, you got a problem, you know? And so that's the idea of wanting to be on the inside of you is it wants to become a part of you. Again, you can, you know, <clears throat> we can have lustful thoughts and, and then we can rebuke them. But if we keep, partner with like a spirit of lust or a spirit of Jezebel or a spirit of Ahab or whatever, then it can become a part of us. And then it can begin to change how we react and how we, we look at things differently. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's initially what I got. What'd you get, Neil? Kind of the same thing. It's a spiritual warfare dream. Um, the fact that mom's there is a, it's a generational thing and it may have started with her generation, maybe not exactly her, but maybe dad, <clears throat> something of this type um, that is a seductress. You know, it's it's something that's very alluring, something that's easy to 
you know, fall into and become a slave to, in essence. Um, but you already know about spiritual warfare, so you rebuke her and she trots off. So she's kind of on her way off, but she drops something off and it comes back and, and it's something that you didn't see coming that puts you to sleep. Did we lose him? We did. Oh, my. I had to ask him a question. Hmm. Well, he's not logging back in just yet, but we can send him the video. So Okay, can- so the question I had for him, <laughs> the sleep paralysis is, you know, is trying to put him back to sleep. You know, he's kind of woke in a good, in a good way, in our way, not the woke in the CRT way. Um, and so they're trying to put him back to sleep and paralyze him from doing what he's good at doing, which is spiritual warfare, taking care of them. He's, he's you know, got the sword out. What I was going to ask him, though, was about the vaccine, whether he is being pressured into getting the vaccine or have something like that <clears throat> inside his body that he's being doesn't want in there. And he knows it'll change his body once it's in there and maybe in ways that haven't been advertised yet. Sorry about that, sir. I'm so sorry. That's I'm okay. Just died. I don't. I'm sorry. It was a black hole that you fell into. Amen. Okay, so I'll back up a little bit. Um, so she tried it back, and something came out of you that put you to sleep, into sleep paralysis. And you said you've had this before. So God, it's, it's happened a couple times before. Yes. I can tell you about something that's trying to put you to sleep, not in the natural. Not It's something that's trying to put your ideas or your thoughts to sleep and to pull you away from your godly focus. Um, the question that I had for you is, is really uh, more reference to the vaccine. I don't know if this has to do with putting the thing that went inside your body. Have you had the vaccine or have you been pressured to have it? No, sir. I have not had it and I'm not interested in, in, uh, in taking No, I was with your job. Were you pressured into oh, at least considering? No, no okay. sir. All right, then, then this is something that this is a, a purely spiritual thing, I think. That you know, the, this thing it kind of reminds me of the Matrix put that bug inside him, that they were bugging him to track him. You know, something that wants to know exactly where you are all the time, you know, um, and it will change your body. But you know, you're doing the right thing, you're you're rebuking everything, and you're put on the whole go- you know, gospel armor every day, like you're doing. Yeah. This fight and do not go to sleep. Don't let this thing paralyze you into with fear or anything else. Sleep, you know, narcolepsy, whatever. You know, Man. you're awake. You've been woken up, and you need to stay there. Don't let anything put you back to sleep. Yes, sir. Well, and I think one more thing too is is <clears throat> if there was something related to your mom's passing that has attacked you, whether it was. A medical condition that may be genetic, or whether um, you know it was a heart attack, stress, or you know wh- whatever it was. If if you feel like that thing is trying to attack you, especially an idea of sleep paralysis after dreaming about your mother that has passed away, could be particularly terrifying. And again, God gives us those visions to let us know. I believe the dream is from the Lord. He's given you those visions to let you know that there is a spirit that was trying to attack your mother that is now trying to attack you. And he wants you to be aware of it so you can rebuke it for once and forever off of your generations. Yes. So it doesn't go any further. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Yes, because um, my mother died of cancer. My father died of cancer. And my brother died of cancer. Um how I know it's a it's a, it's 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 that generational curse. That's what I perceive that it was trying to put in my body, and um, and I know and I've been praying and asking God to I- expose this thing. What what spirit is this? You know, because my sisters, you know, they they going through the same thing. So I know it's generational. You know, like you were saying, it's a generational thing, and um, and so. Um, I know I'm I know, you know, I'm in a spiritual warfare, uh, you know, um, kind of fight. And um, so I pray I fast. But, um, you know, the, you know, these spirits still continually try to still try to come in my dreams and I rebuke them not to come in my dreams, not to have access. 
and I'm saying, Lord, is there any doors that I that I have opened, you know, that is causing these spirits to do this? Because, you know, I'm born again, Lord. I'm 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 living, you know, you know, you know, according to your word that I know, you know, and um, so that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. Is there anything that you may need to forgive your mom for? Uh, no, sir. Um, I don't have to answer. I done said a hundred prayers on forgiving my mother, my father. Um, I done, I done, I done did, I, I done dealt with unforgiveness. I done dealt with bitterness. And, um, I even have went through deliverance, um, you know, renunciation and everything. And, um, I'm just saying, well, God, is there a door open somewhere in my life, you know, so I can deal with this thing and shut it off. Yeah. And, you know, cause I know that, um, you know, <clears throat> I quote the scriptures all the time, you know, I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Right. Uh, Psalms 118, Psalms 103 and three, uh, 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 Psalms uh, 107 and 20, um, Isaiah 53, four and five. And, um, uh, first Peter two twenty four. I confess these scriptures. I pray them. And, um, you know, I, you know, I will not lose. I, I will not end up like my mother and father and my brother, you know, um, my dad died of uh, lung cancer. My brother died of lung cancer, but I, I've never smoked. I don't smoke. You know, I've never smoked, but, um, cancer is cancer. So I don't receive any of that. Amen. Amen. Well, we stand with you and believe for you and your family and that God will, if there is anything that you need to do that he'll show you. Um, but, but I, you're doing the right thing, man. You're using the word and, and the sword and, uh, you know, so that's, that's awesome. Hey, Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Okay. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye -bye. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Yeah, that's awesome. Getting a lot of people calling us from outside tonight. It's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mary Suzanne. Mary Susan, how are you doing? I'm good. How are y'all doing? Good. Good to see you. Same. Same. Good to see y'all too. I've been blessed by the last two callers. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, so I had a dream that was unusual and but was kind of fun and so i wanted to see what you guys think um i was at an outdoor event with a lot of people that i was familiar with people from my high school church work we were all just milling around on a large grass field and then we began to head over to this covered stadium oh, wow. um you know kind of like if, if you're at a football field but there was a cover over the seating and um, they were about to start some competitions and everybody, you know, was finding a place to sit down. So the first competition started and it was um, while people were just sitting in their stadium seat, suddenly it was like they were on a swing and they would swing out and swing back. And so it was three different people from, you know, different places in the stadium. They would swing out and swing back and they would do it three times. And whoever went the highest was the winner. And they were no longer on a swing. Three new people were on a swing and they would take their turn. So, um, so even though there was a covering, we were attached to the roof. Um, and when it the second round my friend Avery was going to go and she's she's somebody that I knew from high school but you know we know each other through Facebook now we don't keep in touch very much so um this time my grandmother and I joined her so all three of us were on the one swing where before it was just one person per swing but all three of us were on the swing and um avery was on the left i was in the middle and mamma my grandmother was on the right so we swung out the first time and we went high and en high enough that i wish that i didn't do this because it was kind of scary um 
Then the second swing, I got this quickening that we were gonna go over the top. I adjusted my grip on the bar and I was holding on and I said, hold on tight, Mamma. My eyes were tightly shut, but we went over the top um, like, it, you know, like it was a swing set bar and we swung out smoothly and the third swing, we just went out regular and then we were back in our seats. We couldn't believe what had just happened. Then um, after that, I was at my friend Avery's house. Somebody else was in the room with us and the third person that was in the room was dismantling the footboard of Avery's bed. Um, as we were telling her the story about going over the top of the swing. The third person was then gone and I began to work on the footboard because it was left loose and wobbly. Avery and I were talking about what we do when we come up home from school and Avery said she didn't do much since she lived so far out from town. I told her I often would run errands on my way home but no longer went to the mall because it had changed so much. I asked her if she ever um, brought other clothes with her to be ready to do whatever she made to do while on the way home, like being prepared. And then that was the end of the dream. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so you're at an outdoor event on a large grassy field, right? No, you're you're walking, yeah, you are on a, a large grassy field. So kind of the large grassy field is, uh, I see it as the the mission field and the people that you work, you're, you're there with, you know all of them, people from high school, church, work, whatever. Seems like those are people who are also workers in the field. So you come to this um, covered stadium. So it's a place where there's a covering, like, uh, you know, as God gives us a covering, a safe place for us to be. But this is a this is just an, an event, a place for a competition. So it's it's not it's not your the place where you're going to spend your entire life. You're just there for a little while, just for a season, and you're watching how other people are performing in their giftings per se. But this is swinging, which is kind of interesting. You know, you're on this. This is a this is child's play. You know, this is work. Shouldn't doesn't always have to be work. You know, work can sometimes be fun. It can be like child's play. It should be as easy as child's play because we're children of God. And what children do is play. And so you have three people that are that are in the competition each time. So the first one, you just see random people in the stadium, you know, just swing out over the stadium and somebody goes the highest and they win. So then you're the second round, it's the three of you. It's um, mom, grandma, you and Avery. So it's a friend. It's a generation. It's it's more than a just a generational thing. It's uh, it it extends to your your friend circle. So Avery is the friend who goes along with you, who is kind of a partner in crime with you. You know, you've known her since high school, but there are things that bring you together that never separate you. You know, you 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 know each other even though you're not together. So you're swinging out the first time. You swing out really high, and the second time you guys are over the top. You've gone around in circles. You've done a full circumnavigation of the swing set. And then the second time it's, or the third time that you swing up, it's just regular. I don't know who won that competition. I think going all the way around, you and grandma probably won, I'm guessing. Did all three of you go all the way around or just the two of you? Oh, we were in the same swing together. So yeah, we went all the way over. So there's, there's no winner in that one. It's just fun. It's like <laughs> you guys are just rocking around the world. So then you go to, to Avery's house. <clears throat> And the third person in there is not somebody who's probably supposed to be there because the person is dismantling a bed. You know, the bed represents a couple of different things. It's a place where you sleep and dream. And for us, that's probably the what this represents. That person is doing something to dismantle Avery's dream life or, you know, just keep her from hearing God's word by dismantling the very thing that she's supposed to rest on. But you're there to help her. And that's that's your role. I don't know what Avery's going through right now, but you're the one that's going to help her to at least try to fix the bed. And maybe it's just going to be to share with her about the importance of dreams and that God is really trying to talk to her through dreams. And the only way you can do that is by sleeping comfortably. 
And and I think you're you're going to be an oppor- be given an opportunity to share that with her. Um, and then you started talking about uh, coming home from your. It seems like um, just a normal conversation of you coming home from. Is it high school or from work? Yeah, school, high school. Mm-hmm. It, it took you back to a time because you're not in high school anymore. So God for whatever <laughs> is, is taking you back in time. Um, to that area, Some, something that was happening, going on when you two were in high school together, that he's trying to highlight for you. Um, and it was just a conversation, you know, does she run errands? Um, does she do anything on the way home? And she said, no, not really, I just I just go home. But you use the, op- use the, the time home as, as an opportunity to work, to do errands everywhere except the mall, which is probably a good safe thing because malls are just weird. Um, and then the other thing you said was, do you bring clothes, a change of clothes? You know, John has said this a couple of times, you know, clothing represents a mantle that you wear. And if you're changing clothes, you're changing your focus, your mission. You know, you're, you're putting on a different mantle than you had before. And I think the new mantle is something to do with talking to Avery. Um, I don't, again, I don't know what she's going through, but I think you have, you are a catalyst in that talk, whatever it's going to be. And it's, it seems to be centering around sleep and dreams. But John, what'd you get? Well, I just like the idea of <clears throat> dismantling the footboard to me just is like a visual picture of the foundation of dreaming. Like there might be something which one of the, you know, one of the foundations for us is the idea that every dream comes from God. And so many people that's changed their life. And they, mm-hmm. are, things in a different way and so dismantling an old way of thinking usually means that you're going to rebuild something new so a footboard on a bed could represent a foundation for her and it could even be a biblical foundation like our dreams through the bible study series which were <coughs> done reframing but um it's it's just something for people to have that in their repertoire you know we've all heard some of the stories of, of, uh, you know, Joseph or Daniel or things throughout the Bible, but to have that rock solid foundation of the nuances of the language of God, of the love language of God, of how he speaks to us in our dreams, you know, rise, my darling, my beautiful one, you know, dreams come from the Lord. These things are just tenets of the culture that we've created around, you know, what we do, the spiritual intelligence uh, service, the spiritual intelligence mentorship, dream life decoded, um, but there's a lot of people that they've never heard those things and they don't have that basis in particular for establishing a dream life and knowing that it's perhaps one of the most important ways that the average human being communicates with the Lord and God communicates with them. And so to be able to dismantle maybe some limiting beliefs in that area and to build that back up where they have a strong footing uh, on their bed. So when they lay down, they expect, you know, just even creating a level of expectancy you know, have a journal with you, expect God to speak to you, ask God questions when you go to sleep. These are things that we've said a thousand times. You know, so many people, the first time they hear that, it blows their mind. I never thought of asking God a question before I went to sleep. You know, <clears throat> and so what I believe is that Avery in particular needs a stronger foundation in dreams. And I feel like what you have is you have a generational flow, which is the idea of the swing. It's like an arc. And it's almost like a character arc in a movie. And it's the idea of going higher, you know, with your grandma on one side. And then who was on the other side of you? Avery. 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 Mm-hmm. And who, who is she? She's a friend from high school? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so the idea of, you know, your generation there, your grandma there, your ancestor there, and your friend there, I feel like this is something that's going to affect both your family and friends but you were kind of in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's the idea that it kind of centered around you. And I feel like the work that God is doing in your life through dreams and the revelation that you're receiving through dreams is something that's gonna spill over into a wonderful, joyous ride for both your family and friends. Awesome, that's awesome. I had a dream last night that was going back to high school and friends there and and um and then um, you know while you are talking I'm thinking there was another dream I had that was you know a flashback to high school and so yeah well, high school yeah. Was a time frame 
or can represent certain individuals that may have been in your life at that time that maybe God wants to highlight and wants you to get in touch with. But a lot of us, you know, we're years removed from high school. And so it could just represent a time frame in your life or maybe something that happened during that time frame that solidified a way of thinking that God wants to deal with. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you all very much. Always a pleasure to have you on. All right. See you again. All right. See you soon. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah so good very interesting yeah it's just it's cool how god takes different time frames in our lives and highlights them as if they're right now just because there's things in the past that need to be dealt with and you know yeah. some things are good some things are just you know reconnecting some people just god needs to talk to them and using people like mary susan to be the agent to talk to them it's kind of cool yeah absolutely he paints with a broad brush. Yeah. All right, Rachel. <laughs> hey, Rachel. Hi. How are you? Well, um, pretty good. Pretty good. <clears throat> I hang on a second. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Suddenly got a lot of congestion. So I um I actually had these dreams last week, but I had two dreams in a row the same night and then as i was waking up i heard a couple things which usually for me when i'm when that happens oh when that happens i have like frequently when i wake up god will give me a word or a phrase or a sentence that helps me understand the dream so I, I, I know it's connected, but I'm not seeing the connections here. <clears throat> and I'm assuming the dreams were also connected. <clears throat> so let me just go through it as quick as possible. The first one's pretty short. I dreamed that I was with my husband, Benjamin, in a restaurant meeting with a prophetic couple I had been listening to for a long time. I was so excited and amazed to be there meeting with them in person. And I'm a stay at home mom, I have a special needs kid. Like even going to a conference to actually hear any of these people in person has just never been feasibly possible. So um, I would love to do something like that. But so I'm just like super excited. And we've been, we've like sat down and had lunch together or something. And then I look up and I see, and I don't remember who this was. In my dream, I knew who it was, but I don't remember who it was. I look up in my dream and I see, Lana Vosser, who was, um, I'll get the second second, and her husband, they've been, they've come in, they've been seated in the section next on the other next section over from where I was. And I'm just like, I have to go speak to them. I just can't. So I excuse myself after a minute from the conversation I'm in and I go over there and I introduce myself to Lana and I, and I just, I honor her for being the first person to introduce me to the true prophetic heart of God because you know i'd seen a lot of voices out there and it was just like something is just not right here and she was the first person it was like this person is really in tune with god so <clears throat> i was just i just i'm like i can't believe i actually get to meet her so i come back to my table and this other couple is gone and i feel bad immediately i'm like oh i walked out on you know this meeting we were having and um my husband is like um okay he said okay these people just a second let me <laughs> i should just read it i hadn't had a chance to tell them goodbye properly either which has always kind of been a big deal for me much more so when i was a kid but i just felt badly that they had left and i hadn't really gotten to say goodbye and my husband's like well they left you a note they had to run and so their note expressed how much they had enjoyed meeting with me and said they were sorry they had to run so then back to back with this dream and I mean, I can stop if you want, and, <laughs> but back to back with this dream, I have another dream. And in my dream, I'm in the place where I grew up. Um, we had a 20 acre patch of woods farm ish in Texas. And there was a creek that went cut across the property in two different directions and um, had a um, crossing at some point, whatever. So I'm at a place at this. So I'm down at the creek um on the one and the one section right after this really huge storm 
so it's at high flood and this creek is dry most of the year but certain times if it rains you know you've got a four or five inch trickle once in a while you get a major flash flood and we got six feet of water so we're at high flood <coughs> which doesn't happen very often and there's this man with me that i don't really know but he said something about me not knowing the terrain and i respond that i grew up on this creek and at one point knew every inch of it and to prove his point he said well i bet you don't didn't know there was a rose bush right there and at this point we're on a different section of the creek where the main crossing that we would cross from one side of the property to the other was um I respond that, of course, there are wild roses everywhere. They're mostly pink and have four to eight pe loose petals. Then I look behind me at this particular one and see that part of it is up against a tree or a wall, which there was no wall there, but it, it had been put up against something and had been covered with plastic like a mini hothouse and had bloomed <clears throat> much earlier than the rest of the bush. When I look at the flowers, I realize they don't look anything like roses and even the colors, they're kind of like gray and black lavender are different. <clears throat> I, I reach under the plastic and gently, gently touch them, amazed and wondering what they were. Um, the next day or the day after, I am um, part of a bunch of orchid groups. I saw this picture of this orchid, a variety I don't have, that I realized was the flower I saw in my dream but the orchid was like more of a black and purple, not the gray and lavender. There's a version that's similar, but like I've never actually seen one of these particular flowers in real life. And I could tell it wasn't, didn't look at all like a rose, but it's growing on this rose bush. So I did find out that it's actually an orchid at some point coming down the hill. So, you know, there's this whole thing with the flower. So then I'm coming down the hill above the Creek bank and, in, and it's dark and I stop at the edge of the bank because I don't want to slip in. <clears throat> then it's like the lights come on and I can see the bank is as slick and sloped as I thought it would be. I stepped a bit on the edge of the bank and immediately started sliding. I wasn't scared, but I caught myself before I got to the water holding onto a root at the edge. I then hear what sounds like a freight train. And I look to see a massive tree completely uprooted and laying on its side, roots completely free of the dirt. And that really struck me because when a tree gets uprooted in a storm, the roots are covered in, like you can hardly see the roots are covered in dirt, but it was completely bare of dirt. It was just, you see the whole lacy root structure. <coughs> it's being washed down the creek on the flood, making this loud noise like a freight train. I'm in awe of the size of the, the size of the tree and the amount of noise it was creating. Later up at the house, Benjamin, my husband, said he had heard the sound and could hear it for a long time as the creek tra tree tra traveled down the creek. So then as I'm waking up, I heard, pray for Donald. And I understood it to mean Donald Trump. Trump. And then the word subchorionic hemorrhage. And a subchorionic hemorrhage is where the placenta separates from the wall of the uterus early and it creates a pocket of blood and you will bleed um during early sometimes it can cause serious issues sometimes it's just annoying but that just in case you don't know that's what it is so i was just like okay somehow these are connected but i am a little lost so. wow. one other detail <clears throat> i got a message from a friend in south dakota who had also had a dream about a tree being uprooted and the roots were completely exposed and it was making this horribly loud noise as it was being pulled up and i'm like okay that's interesting i'm like that's like just like what i was during here seeing it so that was well, the idea of the tree being uprooted is the whole idea of it it, it kind of harkens back to nebuchadnezzar's dream of the tree <clears throat> in daniel and of course okay. He was cut down, and then there was a, a collar and a chain put around the stump, basically the idea of limiting growth, but it wasn't uprooted. Um, uprooted means to remove forever. It's okay, like the idea yeah. of death or of, you know, dehabilitation, uh, never being able to return to your <laughs> which was not what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. 
But certainly what I believe is going to happen, and I think we're getting that word a lot lately and we're starting to see um, people even <clears throat> getting arrested or spouses of leaders getting arrested for just stupid stuff, you know. Um, but I think we're starting to see that um, in particular related to, uh, <clears throat> well, leaders in the, in the prophetic probably. Uh, I think more of that's going to happen. There's a lot of people, um, not a lot, I, I would say, but uh, let's just say there's a fair amount of people in the evangelical world that are, are really struggling right now. They're going through major stuff in their marriages and their families. There's a, a lot of stuff that, you know, is not being talked about. And, um, you know, there's a lot of shaking that's happening. And I think we're seeing that in the political world. We're just beginning to see that a little bit, but it's going to happen more and more. Um, but Neil, what are your thoughts? I, I agree to what you said. I think that the first part, um, when you're going to the restaurant and you you meet actually two prophetic couples, right? You're the one that you're actually right. eating with and the other mm -hmm. that is in a different section. You know, I agree with John. I think there's a, you know, you, you want to honor both of them, but you you have to get up from the table that you are to go talk to the other ones. And while you're gone, the other ones leave. And as John was saying, you know, there's a lot of people in the prophetic who are, are being shaken out of their place of you know, honor, work, whatever you want to call it, and that they're they're not coming back. Um, so you're you're. I think it's an encouragement to you know these people are are not always going to be with you, but God's going to be with you all the time. They're his. Right. They're they're the creation. He's the creator. Follow the creator, not the created. Don't follow the guru. I think it's just a, you know, the an definitely, admin, definitely, or, or just a an encouragement for you to know that God's the one who's got you, not the prophets. Um, yes. The the yeah. whole piece of taking you back to your your childhood um, and the creek running that's at high flood, you know, it's kind of like in the days of Noah. Um, and the tree falling over is kind of interesting. Um, you, know, you said that. You know, if you if you look at the tree root system, anyone that's come out of the ground like that, it resembles a placenta. You know, the, yes, the roots, it does. You're right. The roots give life to the tree, and the placenta gives life to the baby. And I think mm. this is kind of pointing to the whole abortion issue. You know that that things are being ripped out. Oh, wow! Wow! And and it's a it's a it's a scream. It's a scream with the tree. It's a scream with the baby too. You know, this oh, is a wow. noise that's right. just horrid in God's eyes oh, and ears. Wow. And so I think it's, um, wow. so I think that the part of, you know, pray for Donald and the separation that I don't, I think that he, pray for him because not that his placenta is being ripped out, but that he's going to be dealing with this issue very soon when he comes back. Did I yeah. just say that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm right there. <laughs> so I, th I That's think interesting it's uh, because my friend in South Dakota who had the dream about the tree being uprooted, she's also been having dreams about full term birth abortions, like watching them in real time. And she's just like horrified. We're the only country that does that in the world. Even Europe only, they limit it to, I think it's 12 weeks or something. It's, it's it, we're the only ones that take it to like the fourth trimester, you know? Yeah. Abortion, <clears throat> it's just called murder. It doesn't make any I'm sense sorry. to me at all. Yeah. So, so I think that that you have a part in this, um, in preventing it. I'm not sure what it is, but I think okay. that your your part in this is to not go to the prophets, to go to God no. and find out what His goal for you or His destiny is for you in helping the whole situation with the abortion issue. I think I don't know what your your feeling is for that, but it, I think it has something to do with it. And the, and the, the orchids and the roses that are, it's almost like they're cross-pollinated. You know, it kind of goes back to Christians and the Jews. You know, they're the vines. We're just a grafted in piece. And, you know, you've got an orchid that's in a rose bush, you know, the Rosa Sharon. But you've got this beautiful flower that's that's on top of it. It's nothing like a rose, but it's still got the, the vine that it's been grafted into is the root that we belong to. And that's the root of Jesse. And that's that's God's grafting us into His family, and in order to grow a family, the babies need to be born. Yes. Sounds like yours were. Okay. Don't yes, mind. Just a minute. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they uh he just brought in a gallon box pitcher full of eggs. <laughs> That's to show me. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well that yeah, that puts a lot of things in perspective. And yeah, definitely. That's a, something that God has just showed me over and over. Just, you know, come to me, you know, you can, you know, I'm going to send you a lot of confirmations through different people, but you know, don't listen to them. Listen to me. <clears throat> and this, primarily. And this, this issue is like a raging river. Yeah. Yeah. Well, really and it's, from many I, I personally have lost like a dozen children. And so just the whole, I can't even hardly even, talk about the the whole idea of like why would you willingly do that and so like it's it's something that's very very like painful for me to even think about um so yeah i will definitely have to pray into that more because that is wow intense hmm. wow so good thank you neil that was awesome yeah um, wow well. Yeah, I, I think God really wants to encounter you. I think that's part of the uh, the whole <coughs> thing too. You know, just the idea of growing, um, <clears throat> growing in in your seer gift and in the prophetic, and the things that He's showing you are are uh, pretty important. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the revelation is okay. going to come directly to you, not to people you look up to or look at. Yeah, you yeah. are you are the new prophet. Well, thank you. Yeah, he, he keeps telling me that. He's like, you undervalue who you are because you've never thought of yourself as worth anything. So deal with that one. Yeah. Be encouraged. Well, thank you. I am. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for being here, Rachel. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for calling me in. Take care. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That was, nailed that. That was really good. God nailed it. Wow. All right, Julie. <clears throat> I knew you were going to pick me to follow that one. That was so powerful. I know, right? Oh, my goodness. Yes. Makes you want to cry. Oh, there's a man. couple of crying right. ones today. Yeah. What's that? Alexa, there's a couple of crying ones. Alexa said at the beginning, holy marriage. Yes, yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Okay, so... In the last month, I've had three dreams about moving offices. Hmm. And um, so this, I'm going to share the first one. Okay. Um, so in this dream, I walked back into my office, which I shared with two other people. One hmm. is a current coworker and another one is a classmate from like 30 years ago. Hmm. And I haven't seen or talked to in probably that many years. They had moved my desk from one side of the room <clears throat> to another and I was really mad at them. And I just went on and on and on about how upsetting it was, how they didn't have my permission to move it. They wouldn't like it if I had moved theirs. And um, now I had to set up my computer again, my monitors. And, and I'm um, someone who likes predictability. And, and uh, Scott would never have to move because he had a special computer and nobody would mess with that. So anyway. Um, Scott just stared at me while I was going on and on. And then Suzanne just never looked at me and never said a word. Um, so then I think um, our manager came in and told us we're actually moving to a whole nother side of the building. So um, we're in the building was like a remind me of a big government building with um, like stone stairs where you walk up and you go either to the left or to the right. Um, with different wings and we were going to be moved to the other wing and up one story. So I started gathering my belongings and started following uh, her over to that side. And it wasn't very long before I realized something was wrong with my with footwear. And I looked down, I had a winter boot on one foot and a slip on shoe on the other. So I went back to that old office to get my other slip on shoe. By then other people had moved in there. Um, it was really bustling with activity and um, it was expanded out to uh, like an opening had been made to another office. And uh, so anyway, I look on the floor for my shoe and there are other shoes on the floor um, all over. And I quickly find my slip on shoe and I find my other winter boot. 
And then I'm going, again, going to try and go to the new office. And I was following somebody there because I hadn't been there yet. And um, I never, we never, I never did make it there. There are other things that happened that are not very clear. Um, one thing I forgot though, is my, our manager had told us she was going to tighten up on the rules um, in the new place. So that's the first dream about moving offices. It's really interesting dream. There's something that happened to you 30 years ago in high school that is being replayed by a situation at work now. And it's causing you to move out of your comfort zone. And the idea of the shoes is you're not ready for it or you're not prepared. So oh, wow. that's what it means in a nutshell. You probably Thank know. Thank you for thinking I was in high school 30 years ago. I was actually in grad school. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look like you could have been in high school 30 years ago. Very well could have. <laughs> But yeah, so it's the idea of the, the, the person from 30 years ago as a timestamp of something that happened to you back then that probably freaked you out a little bit, um, strong enough that you'll remember. And well, whatever you're thinking about, it's probably that thing. Usually it'll come to mind and people will be like, oh, OK, you don't, you don't have to tell us what it is. But there's something about a situation, a work situation, and the other person in the dream that's being replayed now that is dealing with what happened 30 years ago. And God is moving you. The move is coming from God. He's moving you out of your comfort zone. It feels you don't like it. You're not happy about it. And it's not something that you want to do. Um, and <clears throat> he wants to, you're not prepared for it. Because again, shoes, Ephesians 6, the readiness of the gospel of peace. Um, and so God wants you to be prepared because you like the stability and the security. And uh, frankly, those just aren't the times we live in. And he wants you to be able to handle what's coming in the times that we live in and uh, move in offices. You know, at the end of the day, it's just not that big of a deal. <laughs> All right. And I, to not feel your pain, I just know that, you know, um, you know, you have a job, you know, you have a place to go. You have, you know, there's so many people that have less. Right. Um, and the idea that you're moving, it, it could also be an upgrade. That, that's the other thing, because you haven't seen the office yet. Mm -mm. We don't think about that. We just think, I like where I'm at. Well, what if God wants to give you more? Mm -hmm. And sometimes he has to drag us kicking and streaming out of our comfort zone and give us more dreams or more visions or <clears throat> a stronger ministry or a gift of prophecy or even more resources and finances to handle. And, and it can be like a, a pain sometimes because it's not what we're used to. But the status quo is the enemy of growth. And so God wants you to get ready, get shooed up for the trip that you're going to take, because what I believe, and I just prophesied over you, is that the move is going to be an upgrade. It's going to be bigger and better. And at the end, when you get settled in, you're going to be like, I'm so glad I'm here and not at the last place. Awesome. Did you start out on the first floor of this building? I, I believe it was the first floor. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you move your new office is in the second story. Right. There's, another, there's another story to this. Yes. Oh, I love that. And you are leveling up. Mm. Just like John said, it's a promotion. You're moving up. Okay. You're one step at a time, one floor at a time, but you'll be up to the top very soon. Oh. It's curious that you have two different sets of shoes. You know, your, your winter shoes and then slip-ons. You know, winter shoes are, you know, it's, now's the winner of our discontent. And you seem kind of discontent here in, in your current position. But you... You're, you've got one on each foot, so you're kind of prepared for two things, but not prepared for either. So you go back looking for your shoes, and you do find them amongst all the other shoes, because other people have been kicking off shoes and have their shoes mismatched, too, because they're all over the floor. So the people that have gone on before you have done the same thing, gone through the same things that you're going through. So be encouraged that you're not the only one that's going through this. And yeah. the people that are up on the second floor, there's a whole bunch of them. So there's other workers that you're going to be with that are just saying they're in the same boat as you are. They're going through the same struggles as you are, but they're moving up too. You know, so you're going to be amongst friends in, in this new place. Um, the manager tightening up the rules at, at the end. I, I don't know about that. Okay. You can't get rid of your own manager, but, you know. <laughs> you know. Well, it's just the idea that more is required at a higher level. There'll be more coming. Yeah. So more is promoted. That makes sense. 
So yeah. Thank you. Well, I'm going to have to pray on all that too and uh, see what 30 years ago. Nothing jumped out at me, but I, I, I you know, I'm going to pray on that one. Think of change or transition. I feel like there was something yes. that happened with a change or transition that you weren't ready for. And it made you feel kind of like you're feeling now with these three dreams. But the idea that you had three means not only that the matter is firmly decided, but it's either happening now or it's going to happen like immediately, like post haste. And so, okay. God, you know, things are about to shift, but don't fear the shift. Be ready for it and know that it's going to be a promotion. Okay. So when you said <clears throat> when you said nothing jumped out at me, I, I heard Spider-Man. With, <laughs> with great power comes great responsibility. Right. So it goes along with your upgrade. You know, it's like John was saying, the, the, when you get upgraded, there's a greater responsibility and accountability. And you'll be ready for it because you're going to swing into it. Thank you, Uncle Ben. Neat, neat. That's great. <laughs> All right. Thank you both You're very late. much. Thanks, Bye-bye. Bye -bye. <clears throat> With great power comes, comes great responsibility. And John has disappeared. Okay. So who are we going to bring in next? Let's bring in Jim. Unless we have any other ones. Let's see if I can do this. Edit, kick, add to the stream. Hello, Neil. Jim, how you doing? Welcome back. Good. Thank you. Good. Hello, John. Glad you could join us. How are you? Back. I'm oh, doing well. My computer just exited me out of StreamYard entirely. I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. Well, you remember uh, my four dreams that happened in that moment when I woke up a month ago or so. The one, the first one was Jesus overlaying history while he was on a cross. We right. had to cut him off, or someone wanted to cut him off. Then there were two serpents. And the lady, you know, the bigger serpent and the smaller serpent were introduced to each other. So here's the third one. Very, very short. Um, I, I found a tan colored tick on my head. I'm holding it and announcing it to my wife and our third son so that he can see what it looks like. I know that we have to kill it. And then I found a second white tick, which seemed to be best I can describe it as it was less mature. It, it didn't look like a tick. It looked uh, like it was immature, like a, a white, gooey, stringy little tick. So preparing to kill them both, I put them next to each other, and they begin to gravitate towards each other. And I'm not sure if it's to fight or to mate. Regardless, with thoughts of the proper way to dispose of a tick, I end up squishing them. And there was a concern that we had to alert all of our sons to check for ticks. Hmm. Seems to go along with the snake dream. Bugs. Other bugs, yeah. Ah, come to you, Jim. So a tan colored tick, kind of sandy colored. Is that what it is? Yeah, I mean it just tan like a tan crayon yeah it's like you're ticked off <laughs> it got ticked off your head um so you pull it you pull the tick off and you you have to show it to your third son yep out of four and you, and you know you have to kill it so the third son is the peacemaker he probably didn't want to kill it did he <laughs> uh he didn't say and i wouldn't okay. know if i would call him the peacemaker <laughs> but <laughs> But he, but he does have those characteristics. Okay. Uh, and then the second white gooey tick. Um, yeah, these are things that are just trying to, I mean, ticks are blood suckers. You know, they, they, they try to they try to suck your blood, you know, and they, they swell up. And then in order to get them off, you got to pry them with a, a hot pin poker or something yeah. just to get their legs to get out of there. Kind of the same way that we got to get Satan out of us, you know. And this isn't a this isn't a possession. This is an oppression. Um, kind of like what John was talking about earlier. It's not. It's on the outside of your body, and they're it, they're not life threatening. They're just an annoyance, and they're just they they get in everything. They they just harass you. I mean, and that's what bugs do. They bug you, and they just kind of nick at you. You know, it's like these just pests. So. You don't know when you put them side by side whether they're gonna mate or kill each other, or fight or mate. I think. Right. <clears throat> and it's kind of like the 
<clears throat> the snake dream where they were laying beside each other and the the littler one didn't want to disturb the bigger one but mm -hmm. it was getting its dna basically from the big one so these two are of the same dna they're the same thing they're different colors they're different styles but their function is the same suck your blood so your best uh tick killing skills is to squish them and the alerting your other sons is basically to, to alert them of the same kind of uh, spiritual fight and spiritual warfare that's going on within the family. And that's a prudent thing to do as, as the father. You're going to alert others as to the same, the, the, um, the threat that's around you and the method of killing them. So take them off your skin, squish them. Okay. Basically, it's, you know, put on the gospel armor and rebuke them, mm -hmm. kill them. Just get rid of them. John, you got anything from that? I hear fiery sword. One of the best ways to get rid of ticks. Well, there's two ways that I learned in Boy Scouts. One is to pour oil on it, which suffocates it. Mm -hmm. Of course, the oil, I think of, you know, the oil dripping down on Aaron's beard. It's like the idea of unity and fellowship from that verse. How good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity is like the oil upon the beard. Right. Um, <clears throat> but also the idea of the flaming sword. The flaming sword reminds me of you know, the white horse rider in Revelation about the, the sword that comes out of his mouth, right? Um, and I think it's flames out of his eyes or something like it's, that. But it's Jesus. Yeah. So it's the, the whole idea of disease that would come against your family and try to attack your family. Um, particularly, you know, Lyme disease is known to, to, to come through ticks. And it's a pretty... Um, debilitating disease for people and uh, very, very difficult. Um, there used to be no cure. There are cures now, but it's been, there's people that have lived with it for years and just suffered incredibly um, because of, of Lyme disease. And it's something just as simple as getting a small bug off of you, you know? And so I, I feel like it's, it's the idea of, uh, you know, just uh, <coughs> managing your perimeter um, being aware of what's outside in your yard, what's around your family, um, just the, the, the small little things that seem um, to not be really significant can, can be really harmful, potentially. Mm -hmm. So the idea of taking the flaming sword and the oil, um, you think about just like a spirit of lust, with sons, if your sons have a spirit of lust and you, you know, you talk about it in community, the idea of oil and you attack it with the word and, uh, you know, you come together as a family and you surround that person that's dealing with it or, you know, drugs or, you know, whatever, it could be anything, but just the idea of community in particular and the flaming sword, the word against it with power um, can certainly defeat it and it can prevent years of a disease that can just fester and fester and fester. Okay. Does anybody in your family have lupus or in your friend group that you know of? No. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good dream. Fourth yeah. one. I can't wait to that, hear that one. What's that? Fourth dream coming next week? Yes. All right. All right. Look forward to hearing that one. Cool. Yep. All right. Thanks, All right. Jim. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. All right. And uh, Antrenia. Did I say that right? No, you didn't. It's Antrenia. Antrenia. All right. Yeah, How are okay. you? I'm doing well. Um, okay. So now this dream took place um, 2021, okay. January. And it was about Joe Biden. Hmm. And so just picture the view that I had. It looked like I was looking at a TV screen and you know how they're in maybe like, um, in what, what is it? The house of representatives or they, they were having a meeting, but it was like a mixture of a, a government office and a cathedral. Oh, okay. And at that time I wasn't aware that Joe Biden was Catholic, but in the dream he had, there was a table and they were all wearing these like robes, different type of types of robes. And it, it reminded me of uh, religious, different religions. And his son was there. So Joe Biden went to stand and he had a scepter in his hand. And he had the, if I'm pronouncing it right, the Eid, E-I-D symbol. 
it's like uh, associated with the Muslim religion. He had the scepter and it had that symbol at the top and he went to raise his hands and his son was walking and he had on like a monk outfit, like the robe. And then others began to gather, but I didn't see, it was 10 in total that I saw, but I didn't see all of their faces. It was one individual, they were all males and another individual that was coming closer, but I couldn't see the rest of them actually gather together at the end of the, the dream. And then I woke up. Hmm. What do you got, Neil? Um, that has nothing to do with religion. Well, it sort of does, but this is not the religion that we're used to. Um, so you're looking at a TV screen. Yeah, okay, so... <clears throat> I was TV really looking at a TV screen. It, it was like the view was like if I were, was looking at a TV screen. So I couldn't see the whole room. You right. know? Um, yeah. Okay. It's like a TV screen. That changes a little bit. Okay. So you're looking at um, like a cathedral slash the House of Representative, which kind of looks, the Capitol building kind of looks like a cathedral in a way if you go inside of it, the dome inside. Um, and it's an office. Um, yeah, exactly. Television. Um, so possibly what you're looking at, at never mind, the, the TV screen was, it was a different thing. So Joe Biden is sitting at a table wearing robes. Were they black by any chance? I know I'm trying to, it was 2021. I know it was either Joe's was black or brown or his son's was black or brown. It was yeah. one of I know I seen a black robe and a brown, a dark brown robe. And I'm thinking it was the sun that had on the dark brown. And then yeah. Biden, he had um the, those Catholic robes. But yeah, it was it was like either black or brown. Yeah, I think you're looking into you're being given a, a vision into a secret society that these people belong to, and it's associated with the Middle Eastern world. Um with the Muslim faith, um, you know, some of the, the dealings that they have are appear perhaps to be religious, but they really aren't They're What this is, is a satanic ritual in my mind. I, I think that's what this is pointing to. You know, the scepter is not a scepter of God. It's a scepter of the other religion, which is, you know, we all got joined at Abraham, and that's where it separated Christianity one one way, Muslim religion went the other. And that's basically, he has gone in a direction contrary to the beliefs right. of the United States. And so he's also passing this down to his son, who is a charmer of a creature. Um, and he's involved in the same bloodline as his father. It, it didn't change. He just carried it on. And so you said you had there was ten people, including Jay, uh, Joe and his son. Yeah, Eight, including them. Was, interesting. So the, the total gathering—it's a small group of people at the top. I mean, this is this is a very tight knit group of people, but it's all men. Yeah. So there's one woman who I would have expected to be in there, but she's not. Um, so it's it's this idea that you've got a team that's running things from a, a satanic viewpoint and they're in charge of the country. These people are up to no good. Um, so I, it's, I, I don't know what for you what to do with it, but it's, it's to be aware, I think, that something nefarious is going on at the highest level of our government and the, the president of the United States is involved in it. Okay, yeah, because I attend a church that is getting more involved in the the um, say the governmental mountain, um, they're going in more of that direction, and that's when I, whenever I hear about things going on in the government, I get really ex well excited. I'm more interested in those things. So I don't know. That's something that I've been praying about in regards to just our leaders. You know, mm -hmm. have you had other have you had other dreams about the, the government and principalities that are over them? No. Okay. No. I think you're. I think this is the beginning of what your your view to. This is the primer for you on what to pray for and what what your fight's going to be against. Because this 
seems to be a lot of spiritual warfare ones tonight, but this is a group that you can do war against in the spirit. Because everything starts in the spirit and it reflects in the, in the natural. And so, you know, we don't fight against flesh and blood. Our, our war is not against Joe Biden and his son. Right. Our war is against the principalities and powers that are over them and control them. <clears throat> so I think the next step is going to be finding out what those principalities and powers are. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Antone. Mm -hmm. Take care. Interesting. Hmm. I, haven't, I haven't had one of those in a while. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. That's uh hmm. Karen Gonzalez. And Neil. Hi there. Hi. Can you hear us? I wanted to share. Um, okay. uh, I, I can hear you. Okay. I just wanted to share a dream that I have with President Trump. Oh, cool. Can you hear me? Yes. Sounds good. Okay. okay. Uh, the dream was about <clears throat> President Trump was standing in a boxing ring. And I could see the, you know, the sides of the where they, they're like the square of the boxing ring. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, come here. He goes, I want to give you the microphone. So I walked up to him and he gave me the microphone. And I started singing a song. And the song was, uh, I couldn't remember the song when I woke up. But when I was sitting on my porch, the Holy Spirit brought it to my remembrance. And it's that song that says, I love you, Lord. And when I started singing the song, I didn't see any perimeters around the boxing ring anymore to hold you know anybody out. Um, and I just started seeing a lot of people coming like to the to the floor where me and him were standing. And President Trump was so overwhelmed by the power of God, and we could just feel this awesome presence of the glory of God in that place. And that's when I woke up. <laughs> Mm. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. What do you get, Neil? You have got an amazing calling on your life. <clears throat> um, okay. So Trump is in the boxing ring. Um, Trump has been fighting for this nation for a long time. And he is now unopposed, but he's still prepared to fight for us. Um, there's no other contender that's in the ring. And so at that point, he turns to you and says, come up here and speak or just hand you the microphone. And your thought is to sing a song, um, which is, I love you, Lord. Is that, I love you, Lord, and I lift my heart. Uh, love you, Lord. My voice. Lift my voice to worship, worship you. So you are bringing worship into this gathering, and Trump is at the forefront. And he's listening, and the glory of God falls on the place and the perimeters that what constrained him in his fight the boundaries disappear so there are no constraints anymore there's no boundaries it's just wide open the fight is done and people that are in there come i don't know about running but they they move to the center of the stage to the floor they come and join you where you are and are overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. So you just had church in a boxing ring auditorium. So I think, um, I don't know if you have a calling to sing, but this is, this points to you being the catalyst for basically a revival. Um, I see you as a, as the, the, the one person who's been given the microphone, and maybe you haven't had a voice up to this point, but now you have a voice that will speak to a large auditorium, a larger group of people than you have in the past. Yeah, wow, that's really interesting. <coughs> can you hear us, Karen? No, I'm hearing. No, I, I can hear you, but it's mo like, mo you know, like uh, echoing. Do you have- But uh, this... I'll watch the video later. Okay. <laughs> Do you have but YouTube? I, I, I just wanted to, huh? Do you have YouTube on at the same time? Hold on. 
Can you hear me? We yeah. Can. Any better? Uh, I, I can't hear you very clearly because it sounds like it's echoing. Yeah, go back and watch it later. Um, you give you a good interpretation there. So it'll be on in just a few moments and you can watch it. Um, but yeah. Okay, I'll watch the video. Okay. Thanks for joining us, Karen. Uh, Thanks, Karen. I can, I can um, pray about it and stuff. I just wanted to thank both of y'all for your service in our military. Oh, thank you, Karen. And the selflessness that y'all have done. Okay. Amen. We love you. Thanks, Karen. God Thanks, bless Karen. you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. <clears throat> wow. That was awesome. That was a, she's got a calling on her life that's larger than what she thinks. Yeah. Wow. Well, we got time for one more. Christina. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Sound All good. All right. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, it's my first time doing any video thing, so forgive me if I'm nervous. Okay. I have okay. a really short, simple earthquake dream, but then I have another short dream that had two similarities uh, related to the dream. You want that one instead? Uh, start with the short dream, okay. the first one we're talking about. Um, this was April 17th of two, uh, 2020. I had dreamed that we had a pretty strong earthquake here in Kansas City. It lasted at least a minute to a minute and a half and had us holding on to our kitchen counter because it was so strong. And as it was happening, there was a strange loud ringing in the air. In the dream, I thought it sounded like all the church bells in the city were being shaken at once. I also thought that whoever is in the epicenter of this quake, and I thought of California, even though that's so far away, is getting hit hard for us to feel it so strongly here. After the earthquake was over, I looked outside and some of the treetops were still swaying really hard, but then my alarm woke me up. <laughs> Where are you at, Christina? We're in Kansas City. Kansas City, okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool America. America, you guys just had the send there. Yeah, we did. Cool. <laughs> All right. What do you got, Neil? Uh, there's going to be a shaking. There is a shaking coming. And I think you were given this kind of a revelation of it back in 2020. Um, said that the earthquake lasted about a minute to a minute and a half. And there was a strange ringing, like all the church bells were being. You didn't say that the church bells were ringing. You said that they were being shaken, um, which is kind of significant yeah. because. Yeah. I think this this earthquake is coming for the church mm. and there's going to be those who those churches whose bells have rung in the past that are going to be shaken and they won't ring the way they did before that god's god's going to be doing something with them to shake them to their core you know mm. and those are the churches that aren't really doing what they're supposed to do what was the part about you that they felt it all the way in california I, I was thinking that whoever is the epicenter of the earthquake, because it wasn't in Kansas City, I felt that it was California in the dream, even though it's so far away from Kansas City. Yeah, I think I think the revival in this nation is going to come. It's going to start in California, mm -hmm. and it's going to the shockwave that it's going to send across the country will be felt, at least as far as Kansas City, probably all the way to Maine. Um, but you felt it because that's where you're you're living, yeah. so. I think it really keep your eyes on California because I think there's going to be some, the shaking is going to start there. And there's some people that are hopefully going to be in a high position in government there soon that will start the shaking mm -hmm. where they are. Um, the treetops are swaying even after all the, um, the shaking had stopped. You know, trees are often a representative of leadership. So, there are some leaders that are in government positions that are going to be swaying and not in a good way, probably. They won't be toppled over, but they're going to be swaying and wondering which way is the wind blowing? Which way am I supposed to stop? You know, do I sway back to my old way of thinking or do I sway under God's covering and protection? Um, but the leaders are going to be shaken too. Yeah, they're swaying really hard, like literally like this. Yeah. Like 
tornado type swing, not earthquake. So it was really even strong. After, even after it was all. Yeah, because I went out the back door and looked over at the trees and they were swaying really hard. Yeah, like unnaturally far. Yeah. Yeah, they're they are gonna be swayed, hopefully swayed in a good way, you know, yeah. towards righteousness. But the, they have a choice. They will either sway and and remain upright or they'll sway and break. Mm -hmm. You know, if they if they sway and break, that's the end for them. You know, it's kind of the concept of turn or burn. I think that's that's the choice they're going to be given. Okay. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you felt it was in California, but you felt it in Kansas City. Yeah, um, I, I think it's the idea. And, and somebody had posted about um, Seymour um, in the Azusa uh, revival. The idea that he was baptized in the Holy Spirit in Kansas City. So the idea of something happening in Kansas City, which could even be the send. You know, it could be the House of Prayer movement. You know, what what Mike Bickle has has, has built there. Uh, love Mike. Love the work that he's done. Um, but <clears throat> uh, literally shaking the nation. Um, when I think of prayer movements in America, I I always think of Kansas City. I think of IHOP um, oh. because other than maybe the Moravians, there probably hasn't been, at least in my knowledge, a more pronounced prayer movement. Mm -hmm. Certainly in our lifetime, as what. Mike started at IHOP and what has spread, you know, literally all around the world. Um, but it still continues to, you know, 24 seven prayer to continue to saturate the country and to pray for an ending of abortion and ascending a revival and the things that Mike and Lou and many others have, you know, championed for years, the justice house of prayer in DC, um, Matt Lockett, Will Ford, you know, all these guys that have been praying and contending for our nation for, literally decades. Um, but a lot of that was birthed out of what was happening in Kansas City. So the idea that places in particular, um, there's been a lot of words about earthquakes in California. Um, the thing that we have to discern is, are they spiritual quakes? Are they real quakes? Are they, I think a lot of people take the dreams at face value and think that, you know, people talk about, you know, states falling off the map and into the yeah. ocean and I don't believe that that's the destiny of the state of California, um, but I do believe that there are definitely some things that need to shake out there um, and, and, and quite a bit. And I think the prayers of the saints um, in particular, even in places like the Midwest um, and other places um, are certainly going to cause the quake that will be felt around the world because it'll radically shift places like Hollywood, places like Silicon Valley, San Francisco, um, things things like that so yeah i believe that uh there's possibly something that was initiated in the spirit in kansas city um that will be felt on the west coast and will reverberate throughout the country okay it's pretty so, neat <laughs> yeah thanks for sharing christina You're welcome <laughs> all right take i care. can save this other one for next time so well we got a little time if you if it's short. hit us go ahead uh, okay uh, this was January 16th of this year. Um, I was up on a large hill watching an elk walking along in the grass by a narrow but winding river. Suddenly I was on level ground and the elk was chasing me. I was running, but it was getting closer. And right before it got to me, I stopped running, turned around and roared in the face of the elk. Mm. It was an animalistic roar and I felt like I had to roar like a mountain lion or other large feline predator to scare it off. The elk stopped in its tracks, turned and ran away. As it ran, one and then the other antlers fell off its head. Wow. Now this one had two similarities that I found out after this dream. Yeah, can you tell? Um, that very morning, well, the afternoon, I went online and one of the titles on, of a news article it said that a hiker roars at a mountain lion chasing him to scare it off. Mm -hmm. And then a few days later, I learned there's some lady on YouTube. I don't know who she is. My mother follows her. Um, she had a dream. She called it a demonic dream. But she was being chased by an alligator, which turned into a shaman. And he had a full headdress, face markings, and talismans. They were running and running, and all of a sudden she stopped, turned around, and roared like a lion into his face. And he stopped, stunned, turned around, ran, and his talismans were falling off of him. Mm. And that happened two to three days prior to my dream when she had her dream. 
That's interesting. So wow. I just found that a uh, coincidence. <laughs> <clears throat> Those are one and the same and your generational connection is it, it's being told to both generations you said it was your mother right uh, no she there's somebody she falls on youtube i'm not exactly her sure who she is this lady interesting but her dream was like two to three days prior to mine which i just found really interesting this is to me this, but is, she's a, a little older. this, this is a spiritual warfare dream you know an elk is not a predator per se but it's it's a yeah. very large animal mm -hmm. you know, it's by a, a narrow winding river. So it's not the raging river of the Holy Spirit that you, you see, you get the vision of in Revelation, you know, out of our innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. This is a trickle. Um, it, it's it's um, a place that it's just a, a marker in the, in the wilderness almost. Um, mm -hmm. But he's chasing you. And, you know, just because things chase you in your dreams doesn't mean it. Dreams come from God. Dream is warning you yeah. that something is pursuing you. And he's giving you the strategy to stop that thing from chasing you. And this other lady who was on YouTube, um, mm -hmm. it says, rebuke the devil and he will flee from you. And you did that. You turned, you roared at him, rebuked the, the elk, scared the bejesus out of him, <laughs> and that's him to turn around and drop his antlers. It's like dropping <laughs> his drawers, you know? It's like everything fell his off. Weapons. Of him. Yeah. You no, know, his weapons, yeah. His weapons fell off. He was, he was, yeah. he was disarmed by your roar. So in the way this dream looks like it went is, you know, learn about spiritual warfare if you don't know it already, which sounds like you already do, but, you know, go to Ephesians 6, you know, and put on the full complement of the gospel armor and stand firm. And that's what you did when you turned around, when you finally stopped running and you stood your ground, you stood firm and rebuked it. That's mm -hmm. when it turned and fled. You know, the gates of hell aren't going to prevail against God's church and Satan can't stand in the presence of the Lord, and especially his word, a single word from him will make him flee. And so that's your strategy. It, you know, you don't have to go into a long diatribe of, you know, quoting scripture forever and ever. It's a word. Just do it. It's like stopping a dog. If it's running at you, you scream at it. It's like, yeah, it's like, hmm? you know, they will stop. Same with the devil. It's the exact same thing. You can't stand you can't stand people who are filled with the Holy Spirit and have the power of God. So rock on. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing your dreams with us, Christina. We appreciate I appreciate it. it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. All take right. care. Bye. You too. <clears throat> wow. So good. So good. Such a rich night. I, I, I love it. There was a lot there, a lot of powerful dreams, some identity dreams, destiny dreams. I love the generational dreams. And we had a fair amount of warfare dreams tonight, which I think is interesting. Yeah. That's God's telling us we're in it. We're, in, we're it. in it. Yeah. Well, I, I, I love it. And, uh, you know, what's, uh, what's awesome for uh, Neil and I is we get to move right into a briefing session um, with Spiritual Intelligence Service. If you're, oh, we just had another guest pop in. We're going to have to take her real quick. <clears throat> yes, we are. Diane Priolo. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm waiting to get my nails done. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I saw I was looking at Facebook and I saw you guys. So yeah. I, I do have a dream. All right. Tell us your dream. All right. So this is one of my famous, I did dream this dream literally three nights in a row, night after night after night, same dream. And this was the dream. Three plus five equal eight. All right. Nice. If past I elementary school, you can I move on. Came up empty. I was doing Jewish calendars. I was looking at everything I could look at. And I put, yep, three nights in a row. Three plus five equal eight. Well, you got a lot of fans on here, Diane, you famous politician, you. <laughs> hey, I just got a new black cowboy hat, and I have a red one on back order. You should see that puppy. It is sweet. I am prepared. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Three plus five equals eight, huh? Yep. Three well, nights in a row. Three, five, eight. Wow. That's awesome. What do you get, Neil? Yeah, what does it mean? <laughs> I got nothing. Me. 
You know, I'm a rocket scientist. Hi, Numbers, dreams. Diane, how you doing? Doing great. <sighs> Numbers, dreams, just for me. I, I, I don't understand. I mean, obviously, three is the trinity of some sort. It's, you know, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Five. Eight's the number of perfection of, of fatherly New perfection. Beginnings. What's that? New beginnings. Is New beginnings. Okay. New beginnings. Five is the fivefold ministry, grace. And yeah, new beginnings. But like, okay, but three nights in a <laughs> row got tell my me, attention. Tell me something new. All right. Times three. So that's 24, right? Just kidding. Well, how about this? And he shall bring them unto the priest who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first and wring off his head from his neck, but shall not divide it asunder. Does that mean anything to you? You got any no, next? Leave, leave my head on my neck. I need it, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Interesting. Well, I feel like. I feel like there's a code here. I feel like there's something mm -hmm. that wants to say. It might be something you have to press into. Um, somebody put 358, like the 358. I don't know if that's an area code or if that's uh, um, a location, um, but it would be interesting. Uh, here's a couple. And it was a distinct three plus five equal eight, like a mathematical. Three, three eight eight plus five, grace. Yes equals new beginnings and covenant circumcision of the heart. I like the three being the smooth stones and the five, or the five being the five smooth stones. Um, I always think of five as in grace. Um, three nights in a row, five, the month of May. Hmm. Maybe something's coming in August. The Strong's Concordance says house of favor. <clears throat> oh, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> but when you have a number equation dream three nights in a row, what's what's God saying to you? What's Pay Papa attention. saying? Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. <laughs> Press in. <clears throat> three, five, and eight are all part of the Fibonacci sequence. What's that? Neil, rock it's a Fibonacci sequence. <laughs> it's a mathematical. It's kind of like uh, God's math. It's it's. How do you describe it? I don't know. I'll have to look it up for the actual definition of what it is. Yeah, look up look up uh, Fibonacci sequence. Um, triple threat anointing. I like that. So the idea of the number of three representing the Godhead. Um, from which all power and authority flows, like the authority of the Godhead. They call it the Godhead in particular for a reason, because it's the place of, um, of authority, right? And five being a grace or a flow can mean a new beginning. And I see this as just being a, you know, and, and, and this does sound a little... Um, I don't know. It doesn't sound as profound as I would like it to be, but and, and I think there's probably more to it than this. But the idea of Godhead, you know, it says the government will be upon his shoulders. You know, <clears throat> the idea of, of power flowing from the Godhead, you know, it's God who sets up kings and deposes kings has given you a grace to have a new beginning in your life. And of course, as we know that that new beginning is in political leadership. Yes. I think there's more. I think there's um, the Fibonacci sequence is a type of series where the number is the sum that precedes it, the last two that precede it. Um, each number, some of the two preceding ones, the sequence normally starts with zero and one. Um, but it's the number of perfection. It's like the number of like the spirals in nature. Um, <clears throat> so... It represents perfection and beauty in particular. So Good I think, thing I'm getting my nails done right now. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. Add to the beauty. So, uh, yeah. You know, and the eight is is like the Moibus strip. It's like infinity. You know, so it points to the infinite character of God. 
Yeah, he's he's limitless, he's boundless, and he's huge. So maybe you need to get a spiral on your nails. I'd get an eight. I'd put an eight on each, at I least like on the it. four hey, fingers. When I, when I moved into my house in Arizona, my mailbox that I was assigned was number eight. I had a grin on my face from ear to ear because I always add up all the numbers to see what he's trying to tell me. So I took that as a sign. Wow. Number eight mailbox. That's good. That's awesome. All right. Awesome. Well, um, by the way, everybody, um, we had uh, the Dream Talks with Diane. Um, it aired on YouTube uh, last week, but it's going to air on His Glory this Friday at 8.30 p.m. So tune in. We had a, just a lovely interview with Diane. She's so much fun. She has that New York accent, not just for live dreams, but all the time. So it's great yes. to hear her talk and to hear her passion and her energy and how God is moving her into a place. She was part of the spiritual intelligence mentorship. And we had talked about governmental callings and she did a dossier and God showed her, this is what God is calling me to do. And she's taken the step and moved into, she was in the retirement phase of her life, moved out to Arizona to be with the grandkids. Mm -hmm. And now she's running for office. And so you can see the transformation of her life and see what's happening. You can hear all about it on Dream Talks, His Glory, 8.30 p.m. on Friday. And, and I just checked. It has 696 views and 56 likes as of a few minutes ago. And that's only in three days. So yeah, I'm, I'm going for 1,400 at least. Oh, when you get on his glory, they have 25 million unique views a month. So it'll go, it'll, it'll go big on, on, but yeah, guys, you can watch it also on dream life decoded on YouTube, but her, her campaign, uh, emails or her uh, campaign, uh, uh, page is there. So, if, you know, go support her. And if you're in Arizona, definitely get out and vote for Diane. Future yeah. governor, future yeah, senator. Cool. I, huh? Future senator. Future senator. Oh, Lord. Hey, I just finished Lester Summerall's book, The Life Story of Lester Summerall. Oh, wow. And he is in his retirement age. And God gives him one more thing to do. And he said, but Lord, I've been a worldwide missionary. I've, I've opened up a zillion churches. I opened up radio stations and TV stations. I've traveled to 110 countries. I'm, I'm retiring, Lord, I'm old. And God said, ah, you're not too old for me to trust you. One more thing. And he laid on him in his retirement age, his biggest ministry yet, which was a worldwide feed the hungry of the world, literally food. The man had to buy Hercules airplanes, C-130s, Neil. He had to buy two Hercules airplanes, $30 million each, build hangars, get the food, fly it all over the world. And that's what God asked him to do in his retirement. And he said, you're not done yet because I trust you. Do it. That's right. Wow. Same with you, Diane. You're just getting started. Well, anyway, that's all glory to God. All right. Got to go get my red nails done. All right. Take Bye. care. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. <laughs> wow. So fun to have her. Uh, she's a hoot. <clears throat> well, thank you guys um, again. Um, if you're interested in learning more about dream interpretation, check out the Spiritual Intelligence Mentorship as advertised right here below. Yeah. There we so, go. <clears throat> Spiritualintel.com. We're seeding our next class. It's going to start in mid-June. We're super, super excited. We've revamped the whole program. Um, it's more intense, um, deeper, and uh, more of a thrill ride probably than before. And uh, so we've had graduates like Diane that have gone on and ran for office. We have people that are doing all kinds of incredible things. Um, and so, uh, and, and we have a, a good group of people that are with us that we continue to do dream interpretation specifically related to national level dreams. And God is speaking to us 
and intelligence through dreams about things that are happening in the country and around the world, about medical justice, national security, the military, politics, um, elections, all kinds of things God is showing us. And it's so incredible to see what he wants to say and to actually get the 411 and the download from heaven a lot of times before things happen. So if you're interested, we would love to have you as part of our next class. Check it out at spiritualintel.com. And we are here every Tuesday um, at uh, 6 p.m., 5 central for live dreams. Thank you for joining and we will see you next week. Thank you.